Well, good morning um, and uh, welcome as we worship again uh, this morning. Um, though it's hard to be uh, separated and, and worship seems like a time that calls us together, um, we know that the spirit is not limited. Um, we are joined together by the wonder of technology, but even by a greater wonder, um, and that is the, the spirit that um, binds our hearts, our souls, and our, um, our faith together. And uh, we offer up our prayers together, we uh, take common hope together, and we hear a common Lord who has called us all. Uh, today is the, the third Sunday of, of Advent. Uh, it is that uh, time of, of waiting and that time of preparation uh, as we prepare to receive uh, Christ again. Um, I know Advent is kind of always an odd thing because it's something we look forward to and we always say it's about welcoming Christ in, but Christ has already come. So it's partly remembering and partly looking forward. Um, and that's, that's our joy, and that's kind of the mystery of, of how our faith works. A reminder today that um, if you don't have a, if you want to have an Advent wreath or a candle, uh, a little bit later we'll have an opportunity to light a candle in honor of the way we welcome uh, Christ into our lives and Christ into our world um, and prepare the, the way. And again, uh, we're going to follow uh, this this theme that um, we've created um, about how we wait, and uh, using the little acronym. So we'll we'll be doing that in a little bit. Um, I also want I'll also share at the end of the service a little announcement for Christmas Eve, so you can start doing some preparation for that. Anyhow, we gather. If you have your bulletin, we gather. Here, remembering our baptism, and we do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we uh, prepare ourselves for our worship today, we take time to make confession, to hear God's words of forgiveness. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure, and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. We'll leave a moment for some personal reflection, and then we will join together in the words of our common confession. loving and forgiving God. We confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. And we have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. And so I tell you, people of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, our sins are forgiven, and we are free. Free from all that holds us back. Free to live in the peaceable realm of God. And so may you be strengthened in God's love, comforted in Christ's peace, and accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As people forgiven by God will raise our voices in singing, prepare the royal highway. Stand by, please.
God's word, God's people see him coming, your own eternal king. Palm branches strew before him, spread garments, shout and sing. God's promise will not fail you, no more shall doubt assail you. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. Then fling the gates wide open to greet your promised king. Your king yet every nation its tribute to may bring. All lands will bow before him, their voices join your singing. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. His gift no earthly kingdom, it comes from heaven above. His rule is peace and freedom, and justice, truth, and love. So let your praise be sounding for kindness so abounding. Hosanna to the Lord, for he fulfills God's word. And so I invite you all into a moment of prayer. Loving God, stir up the wills of your faithful people. Lord God, open our ears to the words of your prophets that anoint your spirit. May we testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And I think we're going to take a moment to just... Uh, open up. If there is any prayer concerns, please uh, let me know, um, and we'll include those as we pray later in the service. Okay. I'm going to unmute everyone. Those on the phone, I think you have to unmute. Your, well, no, I, it looks like you're all unmuted. So uh, anyone that wants to wish peace, please do. Peace be with everyone. So glad to see you all today. Peace, everyone. Peace. <laughs> yeah. Peace. And you, Dina. <laughs> peace be with you all. Lawrence, peace be with peace you. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, okay. What a wonderful sound. So you heard our peace. Yeah, peace be with everyone. Peace to <laughs> you. That was good. Al, it's so nice to see you back, Al. It's so mm -hmm. nice to see you. Thank you so very much. That's very kind of you. Appreciate it. Love to you all. Much peace to everybody today, tomorrow, and always. Thank you. Thank you. This is Lynn. Any prayer concerns? Too many. <laughs> Too many. Thank everyone for their uh, kindness and their good wishes during my difficult period. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, should we continue, Pastor? Pardon? Uh, ready? Okay to continue? Sure. Let's. let's... Okay. I'll mute everyone, um, and uh, and we'll uh, do the reading next. Rick. Rick. Uh, it's me, Rick. Kathy. Yeah. Did you wanna um say a special little prayer during this time for somebody? No. It's... <laughs> Prayer time. A prayer time. Never mind. Maybe prayer time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're unmuted. So we continue with the reading. The reading today is uh, from First Thessalonians chapter five, beginning in the sixteenth verse, where Paul concludes his letter to the Thessalonians by encouraging them to live lives of continual joy, prayer, and thanksgiving. The closing blessing is grounded in the hope of Christ's coming. We begin in the 16th verse. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit,
Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Today our gospel comes from the gospel of St. John in the first chapter. Um, it may be similar to last week's as we heard about John the Baptist, but we'll hear how John introduces uh, this prophet and forerunner of Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. And then continuing in verse 19. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? And he confessed and he, and he did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then, are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. And then they said to him, well, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who have sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the, the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah has said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water, among you, but among you stands one whom you do not know. The one who is coming after me, I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to Christ. And we'll uh, work on our sharing. I'm gonna, we're trying something a little bit different, but I'm going to use this. One of the things afterwards I'd like to ask you, um, is if you like the slides on if they help. Well, good morning. Um, good to be with you all. Um, and as we um, continue this um, Advent season, I'm uh, continuing to talk a little bit about the spirituality of waiting. And a lot of this is based on uh, a special article I re read from um, every Advent uh, from Honoré Nouwen uh, about, entitled this by this, this title, um, A Spirituality of Waiting. Um, for this, this season, I uh, created uh, a little um, acronym, uh, the W uh, for wait is for being watchful. Last week we talked about the A as being anticipatory. This week as we talk about it, we're gonna talk about being intentional. And then finally next week about trusting. So what does it mean to be intentional? Intentional means that we pay attention, attention to something. And not only that we pay attention, that's kind of the watchfulness, um, but that we do things with an intent. We do things with a purpose. We do things as we prepare. And uh, this kind of fits into some of the things that I've said the last two weeks, that waiting, though it seems like it's very passive, is really an active part. That waiting, as difficult as it is to not be in control and to allow things to happen, even when we're not um, in 
in charge of them does not mean that we are passively waiting by, sitting by, but it means that we are intentionally involved. And so there's uh, three things I'm going to talk about how, how we can be intentional. Um, intentionally prepare. One of the things we do uh, during this Advent season, and one of the things that we do during times of waiting is to be intentional about preparing, about making um, things in preparation. Um, we know sometimes that they may not be used. We know that sometimes um, uh, those preparations don't actually fit. I know that uh, recently we've been hearing a lot about the preparations um, that are being made as, as a new vaccination are coming into the, this um, country. And um, I'm sure that some of the, the, the really intense preparations that people do as we start um, actually vaccinating people may just kind of go unused. They may not, may not work. Um, we also know that even though people have prepared and, and made plans, that there will be adjustments that need to be made. But the preparations that have been put in place will make this go much better. And we know that that preparation is, is really important. Today, we heard um, in John, in verse 123, that the same words we heard last week in Mark. Um, these words quoted from the prophet Isaiah. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. When we are intentional about preparing, our job is about making straight the way of the Lord. Um, I think I used last week and talked a little bit about mountains and pathways and and what it takes to kind of imagine, uh, to manufacture that. I'm always still stunned as I think about how we build roads through all kinds of, of ways. We build bridges over rivers and lakes and even big sections of sea. We can level out and lift up parts of valleys so that, um, that we build up mounds and we can level mountains in such ways. We move the earth in some amazing ways. So obviously this is a season of preparation. It's a season that, that many people in December spend a lot of time doing all kinds of preparation, whether it's buying presents and wrapping them and, and mailing them and getting them out it might be decorating and the, the things that we do to not only trim a tree, but uh, fill the house. It may involve a, a lot of cooking. Maybe this year, a little less cooking, maybe a few less guests, but there's always those preparations that we make and uh, those things that we do. So the question really is, is how do we prepare? How do we set our stage in our hearts? Well. I find that, that these notions, these buying gifts, can sometimes become overwhelming and consuming. But I also find that when I take time with them, that they can actually help me remember some of the gifts. And so I encourage us, while we're doing these things, to remember them. But I also encourage us to do those other things that help us prepare for the season so that we aren't just consumed in gift giving or in gift receiving and gift buying, that we're not just consumed about decorating, but that we might take time to read our scriptures, that we would join together in times of prayer, that we would find moments to serve and be able to help others. Um, and remember that these are parts of the ways that we prepare. This is part of our way of, of celebrating a Christ who has come to us. It's to prepare our hearts, to prepare ourselves in a, in a spiritual fashion, so that those other activities that we engage in 
might actually have more full meanings. And so I ask you that when you are doing the preparations that you do around your house, that the preparations that you do, that there be a, an intentionality of spirituality, an intentionality of how you're preparing your heart to once again receive a, a newness of God. You know, we all know that story. I'm going to be reading a story in a couple weeks that probably most of us at least can, can you know, read off and, and, and spout off a couple lines of it at least. If we're like Linus, we can get on a stage and we can tell the whole story, that, that whole reading, because we've heard it how many times. But despite the fact that we've heard it, my goal and, and my desire is that what we do is we be able to hear it anew that somehow we might pay attention to how that story is still filled with wonder and still filled with mystery. Not necessarily the same mysteries you had as a child, not necessarily the same mysteries you had when you were having children, not necessarily the same mysteries you had when you were having grandchildren, but a new mystery. And that comes by the way we prepare our hearts by the way we prepare our spirits. The second realm of being intentional during the season is being, being intentional about our witness. If we listen again to John, uh, th these words from, from the, um, the gospel, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And he came as a witness a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. Now that's, that's John's core message, that the, the message that is being told is that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. He came as an intentional witness to God, one to point the way, one to prepare our hearts. So many times when we're intentionally inviting, we, we do that. Now, 2020 is not really a time when we necessarily plan to go or invite a lot of people over to the house. But it is a time when we may be missing those invitations. And we might be thinking, how do we um, handle this time when we would normally be together? It is a time of inviting people to come somehow and get close. It is a time, I know that in my own family, we are planning how do we, how do we make preparations for our Zoom meetings? How, you know, how do we do that? For Thanksgiving, my sister set up a, a big spread chart so that my mother could get calls periodically through the day, but we didn't inundate her throughout the day so she could have some rest then with that. But what I would also ask is that when we are intentionally inviting people, that we're intentionally inviting them into a process of faith, into the process of how our faith really does change. When, it, when we talk now in, in 2020, how are you coping? How does your faith help you cope? And are you inviting people? It doesn't mean like, pushing them. It doesn't mean necessarily proselytizing. It doesn't mean pushing them to say they have to believe or their salvation rides on it. But in a sense, it does. Because if they're not coping, what you can do is you can invite them into the gift of faithfulness, into the gift of hope. And that gift is a gift that invites people to think about things differently a gift that invites people to see in you and see how you use your faith to cope. So it's really important that what we've done is we've intentionally you know, fed our spiritual selves so that our witness also becomes a gift to other people. 
that our witness is, is one that, that proclaims that this faith does have qualities that help us get through these very difficult times. And so we are intentionally inviting people. We are looking for people who aren't doing so well and inviting them into a place of faith. We are inviting them into an opportunity to be and explore things a little bit differently. My third point is that I think during this Advent season, we also are intentionally identifying. We're identifying the real source of our, our faith. In John 1, the, the gospel writes, uh, these are the, the people sent from the, the priests and the Levites. Who are you? So they say to John the Baptist. And he confessed and did not deny it but confessed, I am not the Messiah. So he didn't really say who he was. He said, I am not the Messiah. And they said, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Are you these things that we expect? You know, that's what they were saying because they were expecting Elijah to come. They were expecting the prophets to come. He answered, no. And then he said to them, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who have sent us. What do you say about yourself? And they asked him, why are you then baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered, this is what I am. I am that messenger. I baptize with water. Among you stands one who you do not know. The one who is coming after me I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. When we are intentional, part of the message is about pushing the attention off of us and onto Christ. It's identifying that the source of our very faith comes from Christ. Have you ever seen this? When my father, when I was growing up, I remember my father having great umbrage about this phrase, Merry Xmas. I don't know, how, how any of you kind of feel that way? I did too, until I learned something, a little bit of Greek. Has anyone ever seen the symbol? It kind of looks like a crossed out P. Like I wrote a P and I, I somehow missed it, but you, we see this in church. And this is one of the very earliest signs and one of the earliest symbols of Christ. Because this isn't an X and this isn't a P. The X, the, the cross is, an, is a chi. So the, one of the words um, in the letter, in the, in the um, Greek alphabet, you might have heard about chi's, you know, chi omega or chi something, you know, like that. C-H-I um, is how we spell it. But that's the very first letter for Christ. The P is actually a, an R, it's a row. And so when you would put these letters together, the chi row, those are the very first two letters in the um, spelling of Christ in, in Greek. And so when you are doing this, this is an abbreviation for Christ. When we put that, just the chi, just the X, the, the chi in itself is simply a celebration of Christ. It's, a, it's an abbreviation for Christ. And so it's one of the ways we can identify intentionally identify so when people say i don't understand that xmas we can tell them that is not an uh, uh like a a space keeper for christ it's not a way of eliminating christ it's a way of identifying christ in our lives one of my favorite sermon series um i've done for advent and christmas was called the x's of christmas and uh, this was always the Christmas sermon about talking about 
the tie in the in the in the Christmas story. So when we are intentionally identifying Christ, we are intentionally lifting up that Christ is that that most powerful presence in our lives that comes to us and speaks to us and gives meaning. But it also gives us this intentionality of allowing our identity to be seen, that our identity takes power in the identity of God. That when we talk about what our identity is, our identity is as a child of God. And, um, and that is done as we um, remember our baptisms, whether it was a baptism long ago that we can't even really remember happening to us because we were an infant, or whether it was some spiritual awakening that we had at a later time in life, or all of those. All of those are parts of us remembering who we are and who God has made us, who God has called us to be. When we're intentional about identifying who God is, we're also intentional about identifying who God is making me, how God is changing me, how God is moving me, and how that movement, how that change gives me identity. Now, I said I was going to talk about three, but I'm going to talk about this this fourth one that being intentional is also about being active in our waiting i've said this uh in in previous sermons and in one of um Nowen's main points excuse me one of Nowen's main points is that waiting is not a passive act it's not something that we just sit back on but that waiting is is part of an activity that we participate in. And that when we are intentionally waiting for Christ, there is activity that's happening in our hearts, in our souls. Whether it's the activity of preparing our hearts, of praying, of reading scripture, of serving others, of, of preparing our hearts for Christ. Whether it's the intentional waiting that happens as we um, invite people and give witness to people and tell people about, about this faith, or whether it's the intentional process of identifying what makes us different. I remind people that a good analogy for waiting is the, the notion of, of planting. Um, and this isn't mine, obviously, this is in the Bible. But, you know, when we are intentionally waiting, it is like when we are first preparing the ground, tilling the soil. And secondly, then taking a hope, a seed, and placing it underneath, burying it, covering it up, and trusting that somehow there is life in this little pod that that we somehow bury in and no longer be, are able to see. And then nurturing it by giving it water, by making sure that the, the soil is loose, by um, maybe, you know, um, weeding around it, even when nothing is showing. And I don't know about you, but when I plant something, there's some intentionality. There's that regular looking at that ground and looking for a sign, a sprout. And when I see a little sprout, it's the next day, it's looking for that next process of growth and that next process of growth and that next process of growth. It is that process of just looking and hoping and waiting and trusting that something is happening that my eyes can't see, that my senses don't take part in, but knowing something deep within my heart. 
in Nowen's article, he says waiting is active. And that's why I say waiting is intentional. There's intentional activity that we participate in to help us prepare our hearts and to make the coming of Christ more and more alive. May you participate in this waiting process. May you participate in this activity of, a pro of, of being intentional and waiting for God. Amen. We will now uh, do our hymn, hymn of the day, which is uh, Hark the Glad Sound. Please, please stand by. take this moment now to uh, light the uh, Advent wreath. Um, it is a sign of our being intentional and, and watching the light grow. Uh, it is part of the process of uh, preparing. It is part of the process of being watchful, anticipatory, and intentional for the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. So if you take your lighter and light your candles and we light the third candle of the Advent wreath and pray loving and gracious Christ come into our world. Help us to prepare for your coming. Make us ready that your grace may change us and change the world. In Jesus' name, amen. I bring you my three candles. Peace. Let us now enter a time of prayer. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Stand by.
God of preachers and messengers. You have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the powerful, helpless, and sick, you clothe, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need, especially our Trinity members, Chuck Cosman, Marie Chiswick, Shirley Powell, Chris Strader, Al Corbett, Denise Williams, Tina Frankowitz, Bonnie Wolfram, Charlotte Lee, Vern Fleck, Jenny Smenji, and Larry Thompson. Our shut-in members, Eleanor Germano, Ruth Rozak, Ed and Ethel Kleinschmidt, Jeff Shinkowski, Marilyn Sterlini. Our family and friends, Susie, Ginny, Kevin Witt, Debbie Elkins, Dave Elkins, Jenny Winnegar, Mike and Carrie Perry, Lisa and Ken Barr, Jeff I, Dave and Kara, Doug and Carol Brammer, Joe Martin, Richard Kobus, Carl Liebig, Dave McIntosh, the family of Bonnie Wolfram, Sandra Guttridge, and Sue Prepisich. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Here other intercessions may be offered. I'm going to unmute any, everyone. Please offer them as you would like. Lord God, I ask you to be with my mother this week as she moves from her longtime home to an independent living facility. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord. Right, go ahead. Thank you, go Lord, ahead. for finally, thank you, Lord, for finally getting the vaccine to us to fight this epidemic. Keep us safe at this time. anyone else we lift up thank you thank you lord for uh healing uh mary beth we lift up uh mckenzie and mckaylee and delaney um, as they um, struggle with covid we thank you for the recovery of Al and, and for bringing him home and ask you to continue to give him strength in his recovery. Thank you. Thank you. My, my brother and sister-in-law both have COVID also. We just found out. So. I'm so sorry. Oh. I'm so sorry. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved and perfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And now draw us near, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 I do remind us that, um, and that even as, as we make our offerings, you know, this is a, a chance of being intentional. I, I know that it's probably not a common thing to, to say a prayer over something when you put it in the mailbox, but it never hurts to say, you know, gracious God, we, we thank you for the opportunities that you've given to us and uh, let these gifts that I send off to my church or to whatever uh, agencies, whether it be the, the Synod or the National Church or some other uh, agency, let them be a blessing to the world um, and use them for your purposes. And so we do that. Whether you're clicking on, on that bank um, thing, uh, these are opportunities for prayers. Pastor, could you unmute yourself? Sorry about that. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. And we join our hearts together through that spirit and pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. At this time, we'll have the announcements. I'm going to unmute everyone. Um, so please, uh, are there any announcements? Dina, maybe you remind everybody to stay on. Um, if everybody could stay on afterward, we're going to have our congregational meeting and um, do some voting and get some good announcements. And um, I just want to, um, uh, Rick Elkins is painting in the basement. Um, he's doing the Sunday school rooms and he went down to get the paint out of the um, Mr. J's theater that we have all our fellowship stuff in. And um, the paint has suddenly disappeared. So if anybody knows where it could possibly be, we're missing a gallon and a half of Sherwin-Williams Pro Max 200 low sheen eggshell wall paint and a gallon of Sherwin-Williams Duro semi-gloss white. Um, so if anybody has an idea where it could have gone, um, if they could get in contact with me, that would be great. This is, Dot this is Dottie and I'd like to thank everyone who participated in the food drive yesterday Despite the rain and the cold weather, my trunk is full of food and they're going to be so happy on Tuesday when I show Good. up. Good. Thanks for doing yes. this, Daddy. Thank Stop you, Daddy. Thank you. I have an announcement. All right. um, I got a phone call this week from, uh, from Kathy Godfrey. Um, <laughs> great news that she asked that I, I pick one. 
and that is that Shipra and Priyanka are expecting <laughs> Congratulations. I'm so happy for that. We didn't, Thank hear, you. I didn't hear you, Rick. It kind of bleeped out. Yeah, yeah. And Shipra and Priyanka are expecting another child. Oh, oh all right. Yay. <laughs> what a blessing. Yay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, so I, I, don't, I, I, believe, I believe, Priyanka, it's in April. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, April fourteenth. April fourteenth. Oh, that's oh, that's joyous news in a in a in a time where so much of the news has been has been difficult. To hear this is is nothing short of joyous. That is absolutely great. Now I'm not going to ask if you know the gender of the child yet. <laughs> no, but if it is if it is a daughter, I've got it. I know. <laughs> so that was just perfect. Brothers marrying sisters. Oh, I love it all. I love it all. Brothers marrying sisters, he said. <laughs> I hope you're feeling okay. Pa Pastor, I don't want to put you on the spot, but would you offer a prayer for Shepard and Priyanka uh, as they go forward? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, loving God, uh, we talk about miracles and we talk about the miracle of waiting. Pregnancy is, is such a, a gift and such an example of, of that opportunity, of the hopes that fill us and of the, the spirit that we feel inside as new life becomes more and more real. Uh, we ask you to, to bless Shipra and Priyanka as they prepare for this coming of, of a new hope and a new expected one that you will bring into their life. We pray that um, this little baby will be a blessing to them as the baby and the Christ child has been a blessing and continues to bless all of us time and time again. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Congratulations, Skipper and Priyanka. Thank you. Happy. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, yes. All of us are so happy for you. That's just great news. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You know, Scarlett does need someone else to play with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, right. <laughs> yeah. She needs a little playmate. <laughs> someone she can mother. So I have an announcement. Um, last week we talked a little bit about um, uh, Christmas Eve. Christmas services, and what we decided is that um, on Christmas Eve, we will meet on Zoom in a, in a service somewhat like this. Um, one of the things I'm going to kind of prepare you for is that one of the things I'm going to ask you to bring to that service, I'm, this is, you know, you can't just bring yourself, you can't just dress up, you got to bring something. So um, it should be a little easier since you're in your house. Um, but bring um, a nativity or something that has meaning and power and has, has made your Christmases um, something more special. And be prepared to talk about why this, this gift, why this thing that you bring, whether it be a, a nativity or an ornament or something like that, brings meaning and how that brings meaning. But I'm also going to ask you to think a little bit about how does it inform you of uh, of Christ's um, life in our in our in your life? Um, we're going to do a little bit of, of sharing, kind of like what we did on Thanksgiving. I just wanted to give you a heads up so you could start thinking about that. So that's um, on uh, Christmas Eve, Thursday the twenty fourth at five p.m. Now. The other thing I'm going to tell you is that we will have and we will put um, available on the morning of the 24th a uh, worship that is really not interactive. It's going to be more one that you can observe. It's going to be something that's recorded earlier, but that you can uh, use at any time, whether it's on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, or even since Christmas 
um, day is on a Friday. If you wanted to use it on Saturday or even look at it later in the weekend, you could be able to look at that. So it's an opportunity. Um, it'll be a little bit more formal, look a little bit more like you might expect a church service uh, to look if you were in church and you had to view it over the, the internet. So um, I just wanted to get, kind of let you let you know about those things. And when will we, when will that be televised or when do we? How do... So the second one I talked about, you'll be able to pull up whenever, whenever it's convenient for you. Okay. So okay. we, it won't be like we'll be worshiping together because it will be all, it will be like watching a show, watching. but it won't be like, you know, you have to tune in, you know, Friday at, at 10 a.m. Okay. It will be, you can do it, you know, when it's convenient. Maybe you do, you do it together as a family or something like that. Um, it's going to be uh, YouTube or uh, or FaceTime uh, or both, or I mean Facebook. What we're going to try and do, Pastor, is put it on YouTube, put it on Facebook, and we'll also put it on our Trinity website. Okay, great. Sounds great. So before, you know, as the, as the roast is cooking or something like that, or after dinner, um, or after, you know, you've exchanged presents or seen everybody, um, give you an opportunity to worship. It's wonderful. Is it like about an hour or 45 minutes or such? Uh, we don't know yet. Um, okay. It will include some special music from Jeremy and Alex and um, Jeremy's wife, Melody. Um, so we're very excited about that. You know, they always do such a great job and they're, they're putting some extra special efforts into this. Um, it will include, um, you know, I'm, we're going to record this in the sanctuary. So you'll have some of the images of the sanctuary um, visible when, you know, when we're worshiping. Okay. That sounds great. wonderful. Sounds great. Yeah. Looking forward to that too. Are there any other announcements? Can I ask one other quick thing? For the last three weeks, I've been using this PowerPoint to kind of illustrate some of my sermon. Do you find that helpful? Do you find that distracting? Helpful. 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 Yeah, it's helpful. Helpful. Okay. It's helpful to see your words and your meanings in print. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Well, then let us go in peace. Let us be intentional about preparing the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Okay, please.